Hi, welcome to this Corporate Maths video. In this video, we're going to look at the video solutions to the two-way tables practice questions. If you need any extra help on two-way tables, if you go to corporatemaths.com forward slash content, so scroll down to video number 319, there's a dedicated tutorial there on two-way tables. Alternatively, you could scan this QR code. But in this video, we're going to focus on the video solutions to the practice questions, so let's get started. Okay, let's have a look at question number one. So question number one says, below are 12 cards from a game. So these are 12 cards from a game. So we've got a green circle, a red square, a green square, a red square, a green circle, a green circle, a red square, a green circle, a red square, a green circle, a red circle, and a red circle. I think I've said all those, right? And then part A says, complete this two-way table. So in terms of the red squares, we've got one, two, three, four red squares, so there's gonna be four red squares. Now in terms of the green squares, so the green squares, we've got one of those, so one. Next, the red circles, so let's look for the red circles, we've got one, two of those, so two. And finally, the green circles, we've got one, two, three, four, five green circles, so it's five. And I'm just gonna check, we had 12 cards to begin with, let's add up these numbers and check we get 12. Four plus one is equal to five, plus five is equal to 10, plus two is equal to 12. So we've got 12 inside of our two-way table, and that's it. So we've completed our two-way table. So part B says, one of the cards is picked at random. What's the probability it's a green circle? So one of these cards is gonna be picked at random, and there's 12 of them all together. Now in terms of green circles, we've got five green circles, one, two, three, four, five. So the probability of picking a green circle will be five out of 12, or five twelves. So let's write that down, five twelves, because there's five green circles, and there's 12 shapes all together, 12 cards all together, and that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number two. So question number two says, 80 students visit the library over three days. So we've got 80 students and they visit the library over three days and the two-way table below shows some information about these students. So obviously we've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they're the three days. We've got our total, so the total number of year seven students, so there's 38 year seven students altogether. We then have the total number of year eight students, there's 80 students altogether, and then we've got the total per day. Okay, so we've been asked, part A says to complete the two-way table. So we need to find the missing number. So I'm gonna start off by finding this number, number of year eight students. So there's 80 students all together, and 38 are in year seven, so the rest are in year eight. So if we do 80, subtract 38, that's equal to 42. So that means that there's going to be 42 year eight students. So there's 42 year eight students. Now let's find this number, the number of year eights that visit on Wednesday. So altogether on Wednesday, 26 students visit the library. 13 of them are near seven, so the rest of them are near eight. So if we do 26, take away 13, that's equal to 13. So that means there's 13 year eight students to visit the library on Wednesday. Now I'm gonna find this number here because we know there's 42 year eight students all together. Well, that means they've visited on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. So if we add together the 14 and the 13, so 14 plus 13, that's equal to 27. So there's 27 year eight students visit on Monday and Wednesday, but 42 visit in total. So if we do 42 take away 27, that'll tell us how many year eight students visit the library on Tuesday. So let's do that. Two take away seven we can't do, so let's borrow three and 12. 12 take away seven is five, and three take away two is one. So that means there was 15 year eight students on Tuesday, and if we check this, 14 plus 15 is 29, plus 13 is 42, fantastic. Now we've just got these three more boxes to fill in, this one, this one, and this one. We could do this one here by adding these two numbers together and taking them away from 80, so let's do that. So let's do 33, so 33 plus 26, and that's equal to three plus six is nine, and three plus two is equal to five. So that means that 59 students in total visited on Tuesday and Wednesday. So if we take that away from 80, we can see how many students visited on Monday. So 80 take away 59, that's equal to, so borrow up seven and 10. 10 take away nine is one, and seven take away five is two. So it means that 21 students visited the library on Monday in total. 14 of them were in year eight, so if we do 21 take away 14, that's equal to seven. So that means there's seven year seven students visited the library on Monday. And finally, we just need to know this number. Now we can find it in a couple of ways. We could do seven plus 13 is 20, and take that away from 38, and 38 take away 20 would be 18. Alternatively, we could have done 33 take away 15, which is 18. 33 take away 15 is equal to 18, and that's it. So we've completed the two-way table. And that's it, so we've done part A, we've completed the two-way table. 
Okay, so now let's have a look at part B. So part B says one of the students, one of the 80 students, has picked a random to win a prize. Write down the probability that the student is in year 7. So there's 80 students. We're told that in the question. And if we go up, actually, we can see from the total there's 80 students or 80 students visited the library. And then we're asked, what's the probability the student is in year 7? And there's 38 students in year 7. So that means the probability of picking a year 7 student will be 38 out of 80. So let's write that down. So it's going to be 38 out of 80. Now we're not asked to cancel this down so we could just leave it like that if we wished but I'm going to cancel it down so I'm going to divide both of these numbers by 2 so that would be 19 out of 40. So that's going to be 19 fortieths and that's it. Okay and the next part, part C. Part C says write down the probability that the student visited the library on Tuesday. So there's 80 students all together and on Tuesday 33 students visited the library on Tuesday so it's going to be 33 out of 80 or 33 eightieths. So let's write that down. So it's going to be 33 eightieths. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number three. So question number three says, the two-way table shows information about the students in a class. So we've got their hair colour, either they've got brown hair, blonde hair, or red hair. And in terms of the glasses, we're told either that whether they've got glasses or not glasses, so they've got this two-way table. So for instance, there's six students with blonde hair that wears glasses, and so on. And part A says, find the total number of students in the class. So if we add these numbers together, we'll find the number of students in the class. So three plus six plus three plus 5, plus 4, plus 1. So let's work that out. 3 plus 6 is 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 5 is 17, plus 4 is 21, plus 1 is 22. So there's 22 students in the class. Okay, our next part. The next part says, a student is picked at random from the class, so one of the students in the class is picked at random. What's the probability that they do not wear glasses? So let's write down the number of students that wear glasses and don't wear glasses. So 3 plus 6 is equal to 9, plus 3 is equal to 12. So 12 of the students wear glasses. And in terms of not wearing glasses, 5 plus 4 is equal to 9, plus 1 is equal to 10. So 10 of the students do not wear glasses. And we've been asked to find the probability that a student picked at random from the class, so there's 22 students in the class, and the probability that they do not wear glasses that's going to be 10 out of 22 or 10 22ths 10 20 seconds so let, and we can also cancel that down now we're not being asked to cancel it down so we could leave it like that or we could divide both of these numbers by two to get five elevenths so the probability that somebody does not wear glasses if they're picked at random would be five elevenths okay our next part says the probability that the student picked at random from the class has blonde hair so let's go up to our table and let's work out the total number of students that have each color of hair so three plus five there's eight students with brown hair Blonde hair, 6 plus 4, that's 10. And then red hair, 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So we want to find the probability that a student picked from the class, so there's 22 students, and we want to find the probability that that student has got blonde hair. Well, it's going to be 10 out of 22, or 10 20 seconds. So it's going to be 10 out of 22 again. And if we cancel that down, and we've not been asked to, but if we cancel it down, we get 5 elevenths. So the answer is 5 elevenths. Okay, and then our next part. The next part says, so the students picked a random from the class and find the probability that the student either wears glasses or has brown hair. So either whether they've got glasses or brown hair, they could, or both. So let's have a look at the students who wear glasses or have brown hair. So wear glasses, so it could be one of those students, one of those students, or one of those students. And brown hair, well, it's either that one or that one. So that means that the, student, it either, the student can either wear glasses or have brown hair. So any of these students, if they're picked, they will either have brown hair or glasses or both. It's only these five students that don't wear glasses and don't have brown hair. So altogether, if we add these numbers together, we've got 3 plus 6, that's equal to 9, plus 3 is 12, plus 5 is 17. So 17 students in the class either have glasses or brown hair or both so it's going to be 17 out of 22 and that's it okay let's look at our next question question number four so question number four says a cinema records some information about the visitors they have one weekend so these are the visitors to the cinema one weekend we've got adults children total and we've got saturday and sunday and the total again and we've been asked to fill in the missing values Okay, so we want to find the missing values. So to start off, if I could even find this number or this number to begin with, I'm going to start with this number. So there's 360 people visit the cinema in total, and there's 143 adults. And this is a calculator question. So if we do 360 subtract 143, that'll tell us how many children visit the cinema in total. So 360 subtract 143 is equal to 217. So there's 217 children that visited the cinema in total that weekend. Now 115 of them visit on Saturday. So if we take the 115 away from the 217, that's going to tell us how many children visited the cinema on Sunday. So 217 subtract 115 will be equal to 102. And that was 217. So that's 102 children visited the cinema on Sunday. 
Okay, now, okay, let's either work out the number of adults that visited on Saturday or the number of people that visited on Sunday in total. I'm going to look at the Sunday in total because I know that 360 people visited the cinema and 212 visited on Saturday. So if we do 360, take away 212, that's equal to 148. So that means that 148 people visited the cinema on Sunday. Okay, now we need to either work out the number of adults that visited the cinema on Saturday or Sunday. But what's great is we've got the total for each of those days and the children. So if we just take the 115 children that visited on Saturday away from the 212 people that visited on Saturday, we can find this number. So 212 take away 115 and that's equal to 97. So that means that 97 adults visited the cinema on Saturday. And now we want to find out how many adults visited on Sunday. So we can either do 148 take away 102, and that's going to be 46. Or we could have done 143 take away 97, and that's 46 as well. And that's it. So we've completed our two-way table. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number five. So question number five, we're told Amina runs a market store and the table shows information about what items she has in stock. So these are the items she sells. She sells t-shirts, jumpers and coats and we've got small, medium and large. And we've got some of the numbers, some of the quantities and we've got one of the totals. We know that she's got 10 medium items in total and we know she's got 44 coats in total and she's got 200 items altogether. And we've been asked to complete the two-way table. Okay, I'm going to start off with the jumpers. She's got 36 small and 50 51 large and no medium. So if we add those together, 36 plus 51, that's equal to 87. So that means she's got 87 jumpers altogether, just adding those two numbers together. Now, if we look at those medium items, she has 10 altogether. She's got one coat, one medium coat. So if we take the one away from 10, so 10 take away one, that's equal to nine. So that means she's got nine medium t-shirts. Okay, so we've filled in two of the boxes. Now let's fill in another one. Now I'm gonna look at these large coats because we know she's got 28 small coats and one medium. So that's 28 plus one is equal to 29. So she's got 29 coats that are small and medium. We know she's got 44 coats altogether. So if we do 44, take Take away 29, that's equal to, well, taking away 30 would be 14. So taking away 29 would be 15, just adding one back on. So that means that she would have 15 large coats. And let's just check that. 28 plus 1 is 29 plus 15 is 44. Fantastic. Okay, now let's look at the small items, the total number of small items. So she's got two small t-shirts, 36 small jumpers, and 28 small coats. So let's add those together. 28 plus two, well, 28 plus two is 30. So we've got 30 plus 36 is equal to 66. So she's got 66 small items, so 66. Okay, now let's go for this number here, the total number of large items. So she's got 66 small items and 10 medium items. So that's going to be 76 altogether, small and medium items. If we take that away from 200, that'll tell us how many large items. So let's do 66 plus 10, that's equal to 76. And then if we do 200, take away 76, let's see what we get. So let's borrow, that's now 10, across off again, that's 9 and 10. 10 take away 6 is equal to 4. 9 take away 7 is equal to 2 and 1 take away 0 is 1. So that means she's got 124 large items in total. Now let's find the number of large t-shirts. So if we add together the number of large jumpers and coats, that's going to be 51 plus 15. That's equal to 66. So she gets 66 large jumpers and coats. And if we take that away from 124, that tells us how many large t-shirts she's got. So we're going to do 124 take away 66, and that's equal to, well, let's borrow, 14 take away 6 is 8. 1 take away 6 we're going to do, so let's borrow again. 11 take away 6 is 5. That means she's got 58 large t-shirts. And finally, the total number of t-shirts, we just need to add together our 2 and our 58. That's 60. And add on the 9, that's 69. And that's it. And we can check this. We could add together 69, 87, and 44. Hopefully that's 200. We could add together the 66, the 10, and the 124. And that's equal to 200. Fantastic. And we can check all our arithmetic if we wanted to. And that's it. So that is our two-way table completed. Okay, let's have a look at question number six. So question number six, it, we're told that 90 people sit their driving tests over one week and we've got this two-way table. We've got pass and fail and under 20 driving lessons and 20 and over driving lessons. And then we've got the total. So we know that 30 people pass the driving tests in total. The 21 people pass the driving tests if they've had 20 or over driving lessons. The 45 people who have had under 20 driving lessons fail their driving test and there's 90 in total. And part A says complete the two-way table. 
So let's start off by filling in this number here, the number of people who pass their driving tests with having under 20 driving lessons. So 30 people pass, if we take away 21, that's going to be equal to 9. So that means that 9 people who have had under 20 driving lessons pass the driving test that week. Now let's find the number of people that failed the driving test in total. So there's 90 people. If we take away the 30 that pass, that's equal to 60. So that means that 60 people failed the driving test that week. Okay, now let's find this total. So 9 plus 45. So 9 plus 45 would be equal to, that's equal to 54. So that means that 54 people have had under 20 driving lessons in total who done that test that week. Okay, now let's find this number here. So we know that 60 people failed the driving test altogether and that 45 of those people had under 20 driving lessons. So if we do 60 take away 45, that's equal to 15. So that means there's 15 people who have had 20 or over driving lessons that failed the driving test that week. And then finally, this number here, if we just do 90 take away 54, we can find this total. So 90 take away 54, let's see what we get. So borrowing one, so that's going to be 10. 10 take away 4 is 6, and 8 take away 5 is 3. So that's going to be 36. And actually, we could just check that 21 plus 15 is 36. And that's it. So we've completed our two-way table. Okay, now part B. Part B says how many people people who have had 20 or over driving lessons failed the driving test. So we're looking for the people who have had 20 or over driving lessons. So let's go up, we're looking for 20 and over, and we want to find the number who failed. So that's going to be 15. So 15 people who have had 20 or over driving lessons failed that week. Part C, what fraction of the people failed the driving test? Give your answer in its simplest form. So altogether there was 90 people and failed is 60, 60 people failed. So it's going to be 60 out of 90. So 60 out of 90, so that's 60 90ths. And we've been asked to give our answer in its simplest form. So let's divide both of these numbers by 10, so that's six ninths. Now let's divide both of them by three, so that's gonna be two thirds. So two thirds of the people failed the driving test in that particular week. And then next we're told that Alfie says, having 20 or over driving lessons helps someone pass the driving test. Explain why Alfie is correct. Okay, so let's go back up to our two way table and let's compare the people who have had under 20 driving lessons and 20 and over driving lessons. So for the people who have had under 20 driving lessons, altogether there's 54 of them. And in terms of the people that pass, there's nine. So nine 54ths of those people pass the driving test. So for the people who had under 20, 9 54ths, and let's cancel that down. They're both divisible by 9. That's going to be 1 6th. So 1 6th of the people who had under 20 lessons passed the driving test. So 1 6th of the people passed. Now for the people who had 20 or over, so 20 plus, and let's look at the fraction of those that passed the driving test. So altogether, there's 36 people who had 20 or over driving lessons. And 21 of those passed, that's actually more than half, that's more than half of 36. So over half of those passed, let's write that down as a fraction, 21 36. So let's write that down, 21 36. And if we cancel that down, they're both divisible by 3, so that's going to be 7 twelfths. So 7 twelfths of those passed. So as you can see, 7 twelfths is a much bigger fraction, so over half is a much bigger fraction than a sixth. So 7 twelfths is much bigger than a sixth. So therefore, Charlie is right, having 20 or over driving lessons for these particular people help them pass the driving test. So let's write that down. And that's it. So just written down, a much greater fraction of the people who had 20 or over driving lessons passed, because 7 twelfths is much greater than 1 sixth. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question. So question number seven says, the two-way table gives some information about the football team's 50 student support. So we've got Rovers, City, and United. Uh, you can guess which ones these are. Perhaps it's Blackburn Rovers, Leicester City, and Hartlepool United, who knows? And we've got the total, and we've got year seven and year nine, and we've got the totals. And we've been asked to complete the two-way table. So let's start off with the United fans. There's three in year seven, and seven in year nine. So if we do three plus seven, that's equal to 10. So there's 10 United fans in total. Now, if we look at the Rovers fans, Fans. Well, we've got 20 City fans and 10 United fans, so, so 20 plus 10 is equal to 30. And if we take that away from 50, we can see how many Rovers fans there are. So 50 take away 30 is equal to 20. So that means there's going to be 20 Rovers fans. And let's just check that. 20 plus 20 plus 10 is 50. Fantastic. Now let's find out how many Rovers fans are in year 9. If we take the 11 away from 20, that'll tell us how many year 9 fans support Rovers. So 20 take away 11 is equal to 9. So there's 9 year 9 fans that support Rovers. In terms of City, they've got 20 fans in total. So if we take away 12, 20 take away 12 is equal to 8. So there's 8 City fans in year 9. And finally, the totals. Well, let's find the total number of year 7 students and the total number of year 9 students that were asked. So 11 plus 12. So 11 plus 12 is equal to 23. 
23 plus 3, 23 plus 3 is equal to 26. So there's 26 year 7 football fans here. And in terms of the year 9 fans, that's going to be 9 plus 8, that's 17, plus 7 is equal to 24. So it's 24, and if we check that, 26 plus 24 is 50, and that's it. So question number eight says the two-way table shows the grades students in year 10 received in their exams. So they've sat two exams, a maths exam and a physics exam, and we've got their grades. So, so for instance, these three students, they all got C's in their maths and they got D's in their physics. This one student here, this one student here, they got an A in their maths and a D in their physics. These seven students got both A's in physics and A's in maths. These four students, they got an A in physics and a C in maths and so on. So this is a two-way table that shows us their grades. And then if we scroll down, we're asked how many students are in year 10. So we just need to add these numbers together. So let's work out the totals. So seven plus six is equal to 13, plus one's 14, plus one's 15. So there's 15 students get an A in their maths. In terms of uh, B in their maths, or the next row, three plus five is equal to eight, plus three is equal to 11. So there's 11 students get B's in their maths. Uh, in terms of C's in their maths, so four plus two is equal to six, plus six is 12, plus three is 15. And finally, one student got a D in their maths. And if we add those together, we'll find the total. 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 11 is 41, plus 1 is 42. So there's 42 students in total, so it's 42. We could also check it then at this way and finding out the number of students to get A's in their physics and B's in their physics and so on, and you should get that equal to 42 as well. Next we're asked how many students received a B in their maths. So let's go out, we want to see how many students received a B in their maths. So these students get B's in their maths, these students got B's in their maths, these students got B's in their maths, and these students, if there were any, got B's in their maths. So altogether we would do three, plus five, plus three, that's equal to 11. So 11 students got Bs in their maths, so that's 11. Okay, next question, question C says, how many students receive the same grade in maths and physics? So let's go up and look at this two-way table. So you wanna find the students that receive the same grades in maths and physics, and I'm just gonna rub out those ticks for the minute. So the students that receive the same grades, so these seven students got an A in their maths and an A in their physics. These five students got a B in their physics and a B in their maths. These six students got a C in their physics and a C in their maths, and no students actually got D's in both of them. So if we add up to, so if we add together seven and five and six, that tells how many students got the same grade in both maths and physics. So seven plus five is twelve, plus six is eighteen. So that's eighteen. Okay, D. D says, how many students received a higher grade in physics than maths? So we want to see how many students received a higher grade in their physics than maths. So a higher grade in the physics than maths. So we know it's not going to be any of these ones because they got the same grade. So a higher in physics than maths. So, so these six students here, they got an A in their maths and a B in their physics. So they didn't get higher in their physics than their maths. So let's look at these three here. These three students, they got A's in their physics and B's in maths. So they got higher in physics than in maths. These students, they also got A's in their physics and they got C's in their maths, so they got higher in physics than in maths. And there's no students here, but if there were, they would have got higher grades in their physics than in their maths because they would have got an A in their physics and a D in their maths. Now, we know it's not these ones because they got an A in maths and a B in physics, so they done better in maths than physics. These students, they got the same grade, remember, a B in both. These students here, they got a B in their physics and a C in their maths, so they done better in physics than they did in maths because they got a B in physics and a C in maths. Now, if we look at this one here, this student here they also got a C in physics and a D in maths so they've done better in physics and in maths and all the ones below the diagonal so all these numbers below the diagonal here they would have done better in their physics and in their maths and if we check these students got a D in their physics and a C in their maths so no not them not them and not them because they will get D's in physics and better grades in their maths and likewise not them or them because they would have got a C in their physics and an A in their maths and a C in their physics and a B in their maths so we we're asked how many students got a better grade in physics than in maths so it's gonna be three plus four, plus two, plus one. So three plus four is equal to seven, plus two is equal to nine, plus one is equal to 10. So 10 students done better in physics than in maths. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at question number nine. So question number nine says, Ella manages a cafe, and one morning she sells the following drink. So she sells 41 large coffees, four regular hot chocolates, 28 large teas, a total of nine hot chocolates, a total of 61 coffees, a total of 79 regular drinks, and we've been asked to complete the two-way table below. And none of the numbers have been filled in for so far. So 41 large coffees. So 41 large coffees, so that would go there. Four regular hot chocolates, so regular hot chocolates, four of those. 28 large teas, so 28 large teas will go there. 
a total of nine hot chocolates. So nine hot chocolates in total. So that will go there. A total of 61 coffees. So a total of 61 coffees. And a total of 79 regular drinks. So a total of 79 regular drinks. So we've just put that information into our two-way table. Now we just need to fill in the missing numbers. Okay, so let's start off with finding the number of regular coffees. So if we do 61, the total, take away the large number of coffees, that'll tell us the regular. So 61 take away 41 is equal to 20. So there's 20 regular coffees. Okay, now we were told there's 79 regular drinks sold in total. Well, there's 20 coffees that were regular and four regular hot chocolates. That's 24 in total. If we add these together, it's 24. If you take them away from 79, that will tell us how many regular teas were sold. So 79 take away 24 is equal to 5. 55. So 55 regular teas were sold. Now let's find the total number of teas that were sold. So if we add together our 55 and our 28, 55 plus 28, that's equal to 5 plus 8 is 13. Put our 3 down, carry our 1. 5 plus 2, 7 plus 1 is 8. So there's 83 teas sold in total. Now if we look at the hot chocolates, there was 9 hot chocolates sold and 4 are regular. 9 take away 4 is equal to 5. Now, if we add together the number of large drinks, so if we add together the 41, 28, and 5, 41, 28, and 5, that will tell us the number of large drinks sold. So 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 5 is 14, put our 4 down, carry our 1. 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So there's 74 large drinks sold. And finally, the total number of drinks sold, we can either add together the 79 and 74, or our 61, 83, and 9. Um, I'm going to do the 79 and 74. And if I add those together, we get 9 plus 4 is equal to 13. Put our 3 down, Cairo 1. 7 plus 7 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So there's 153 drinks sold in total. And we can just check that. 9 plus 61 is equal to 70, and 83 plus 70 is 153. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 10. So question number 10 says, Judy has some plastic shapes in a tub. And here's some information about the shape and colour of these shapes. So she's got some rhombuses, rhombi, rhombuses, uh, rhombuses, rhombi. And she's got some stars and we've got the total. And there's red rhombuses or rhombi. We've got some rhombuses that are red, some stars that are red, some rhombuses or rhombi that are yellow, and some stars that are yellow. And we've got the totals. And we've been asked to work out the ratio of red shapes to yellow shapes and to give our answer in a simplest form. So let's find the missing numbers to begin with. So let's find out the number of stars in total. So 25 take away 9. So 25 take away 10 is equal to 15. So if we take away 9, that's going to be 16. One more. So it's going to be 16 stars. Now let's find the number of yellow stars. So if we do 16 take away 5, that'll tell us how many yellow stars there are. 16 take away 5 is equal to 11. So there's 11 yellow stars. In terms of the total number of yellow shapes, that's going to be 4 plus 11. And 4 plus 11 is 15. So there's 15 yellow shapes in total. Now in terms of the red shapes, if we do 25 take away 15, that's equal to 10, so there's 10 red shapes. And finally, for the these shapes, the the shapes that are in the shape of a rhombus that are red, <laughs> uh, if we do 10 take away 5, 10 take away 5 is equal to 5. So there's five shapes that are in the shape of a rhombus that are red. <laughs> okay, and we've been asked to find the ratio of red shapes to yellow shapes. So altogether, there's 10 red shapes. And there's a ratio to yellow ships. There's 15 yellow ships. And so the ratio is 10 to 15. We've been asked to give it in its simplest form. These numbers are both divisible by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 15 divided by 15. And 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. So the ratio of red ships to yellow ships is 2 to 3. So let's write that down, 2 to 3. And part B says, what fraction of the yellow shapes are stars? So it's just of the yellow shapes. So if we go up, there's 15 yellow shapes and there's 11 stars. So the fraction of these yellow shapes that are stars are 11 fifteenths. So let's write that down, 11 fifteenths. And that's it. Okay, let's look at our next question, question number 11. So question number 11 says, there's 150 students in year 10 and 11 that visit a school canteen. Some of the students have packed lunches, some of the students have cooked lunches, and 57 of the 89 students who have a packed lunch are in year 10, and there's 72 year 11 students. 
work out how many of the year 10 students have a cooked lunch. So whenever you're given a question like this, I would tend to want to draw a two-way table. So let's draw a two-way table for this information. So let's start off with year 10 and year 11, because we know there's the two different year groups, and let's put total there as well, total. And then in terms of their lunches, some had a packed lunch, so let's do packed lunch, so packed and some had a cooked lunch, so let's write cooked. So we've got packed lunch and cooked lunch, and we've got the total, and then we've got year 10 and year 11 and the total. And let's turn it into a two-way table, I'm just gonna draw the lines in. So we've drawn a two-way table, and we now need to put in our numbers. So we know there's 150 students in total, so let's put that down, there's 150 students in total. And we're told that there's 56 out of the 89 who have packed lunch. So 89 have packed lunch in total, and 56 of them are in year 10. So packed lunch, there's 89 that have packed lunch altogether, and 56 of them are in year 10. So 56 of them are in year 10. And the 72 year 11 students, so the 72 year 11 students. And we've been asked to work out how many year 10 students have a cooked lunch. So we want to find out the number that goes in this box here, the number of year 10 students that have a cooked lunch. So let's find our missing numbers. So let's start off by finding this missing number. So let's do 150 take away 89 to find out how many people had a cooked lunch in total. So 150, and that's a non calculator question, unfortunately take away 89 so let's borrow 4 and a 10 10 take away 9 is equal to 1 cross that out 14 take away 8 is equal to 6 so the 61 students have a cooked lunch now let's work out how many year 11 students had a pack lunch because we know there's 89 in total and 56 of them are in year 10 so 89 take away 56 9 take away 6 is 3 and 8 take away 5 is 3 so there's 33 year 11 students that have a pack lunch now let's work out how many year 11 students have a cooked lunch. So year 11 students that have a cooked lunch. We know there's 72 year 11 students. 33 of them have a packed lunch. So 72 take away 33. So let's borrow. So that's 6 and a 12. 12 take away 3 is equal to 9. And 6 take away 3 is equal to 3. So that's 39 year 11 students have a cooked lunch. Now we want this number. There's a few different ways we can get it. We could have gone this way. Or we could have actually worked out how many year 10 students there are. And worked it out that way. Um, whichever way you should get the same answer anyway or you will get the same answer okay and then finally to work out how many year 10 students had a cooked lunch i'm going to take 39 away from 61 so if i do 61 take away 39 that'll tell us how many because we know 61 people had a cooked lunch 39 at the moon year 11 so if we take that away we'll see how many year 10s had a cooked lunch so let's borrow so that's going to be 11 take away 9 that's 2 and 5 take away 3 that's 2 so 22 year 10 students had a cooked lunch now, alternatively, we could have earlier have done 150 take away 72. And if you'd done that, you would get an answer of 78. So 78 students are in year 10. And then we could have taken away the 56 to get 22 as well. So there's more, obviously, sometimes there's more than one way to get the right answer here or to, the order to fill out your two-way table. But you should or you will get the same numbers. So how many students in year 10 had a cooked lunch? The answer is 22. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 12. So question number 12 says, a coach company runs tours to Scotland and Wales during June, July and August, and a total 719 people went on a coach tour. 394 people went to Scotland, 264 people went on tours in July, 71 people went on a tour to Scotland in June, and 121 of the 300 people who went on a tour in August went to Wales. Work out how many people went on a coach tour to Wales in June. Now there's so much information here, a two-way table actually helps us set it all out and figure out the missing numbers. So let's do that. So I'm gonna write down to begin with, I'm gonna write down Scotland here, Scotland, because we know they go to Scotland and Wales. So I'm gonna write Scotland there, Wales there, and then total. And then going down this way, I'm gonna write down, they go in June, July, and August. So June, July, and August, and then the total. And let's put our lines in. Okay, so I've just run a sketch of our two-way table and let's put in the information. So we're told that 719 people went on a coach tour. So the 719 people go in total. 394 people go to Scotland. So 394 go to Scotland. So we can work out how many people went to Wales quite easily, subtracting those and it's a calculator question. So that's quite nice. 264 people went on tours in July. So, so that's 264 people went away in July. 
71 people went on a tour to Scotland in June. So 71 people went to Scotland in June. And 121 of the 300 people who went on a tour in August went to Wales. So 300 people went away in August and 121 of them went to Wales. And we've been asked to find out how many people went on a coach tour to Wales in June. So we want to find this number here. How many people went to Wales in June? Um, so let's complete our two-way table. Let's find the missing numbers. And there's a calculator question, which is quite nice. So let's do that. So I'm going to start off by finding how many people went away in June in total. So let's add together these two numbers. 300 plus 264 is equal to 564. Now, if we take that away from 719, we'll find out how many people went away in June. So 719 take away 564 is equal to 155. So there's 155 people went away in June. And actually, we're just trying to find out here how many people went away to Wales in June. So if we just take away the 71 away from 155, we can find that number from 155. Take away 71 is equal to 84. So that means that 84 people went to Wales in June. And that's it. So 84 people went on a coach tour to Wales in June. Now, you could have done this question in a different order. You could have filled in the boxes in a different order. And actually, let's just work those out now in case you did that. So if we work out how many people went to Wales, we would do 719 take away 394 and that's equal to 325. If we worked out this number we would have taken away the 121 away from 300 and that's equal to 179. If any of you worked out this number you could have added these two together and taken it away from 394 or 394 take away 179 take away 71 and that's equal to 144. If you worked out this number you would just take away the 144 away from 264 and that's equal to to 120 and then you could have actually then worked out how many people went to Wales that way by doing 324 take away 121 and 120 and the answer would be 84 as well and that's it so the answer is 84. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 13. So question number 13 says, 100 people study one language at a college. So they all study one language. Some people study French, some people study Spanish, and the rest of them study German. We're then told 54 of the people are in year 10 and the rest are in year 11. 20 of the 29 people who study Spanish are in year 11. 31 people study German and 15 year 11 students study French. And we've been asked to work out the number of year 10 students who study German. So let's do our two way table. Okay, so we've got our two way table. Now let's put in our numbers. Now we're told there's 100 students all together and then we're told this information here. So let's start off by putting our 100 here. We're told that 54 people are in year 10. So 54 people are in year 10 and the rest are in year 11. We'll deal with that in a minute. 20 of the 29 people who study Spanish, so 29 people study Spanish, so 29 people study Spanish, and 20 of them are in year 11. And then we're told 31 people study German, so 31 people study German, and there's 15 year 11 students that study French, so 15 year 11 students that study French. And we want to find the number of year 10 students who study German. So we want to find this number. Okay, so let's work out our missing numbers. So I'm going to start off by working out this number here. We know there was 100 people all together. And the 54 of them were in year 10. So if we take that away, we'll find out how many year 11 students there are. And 100 take away 54 would be 46. So there's 46 students in year 11. Now let's find this number, the number of year 11 students who study German. So we've got 15 plus 20, so 15 plus 20 is equal to 35. And there's 46 year 11 students altogether, so if we do 46 take away 35, that's equal to 11. So it means there's 11 year 11 students who study German. And we want to find how many year 10 students study German, so we want to find this number. So if we do 31 take away 11, so 31 take away 11, that's equal to 20. So that means this number is 20. So that's it. So how many year 10 students study German? The answer is 20. Now you could have done that in a different order, so you could have found the other numbers. I'm actually just going to work those out now as well. So if you worked out how many people studied French, you would have done 31 plus 29. That's equal to 60. So that means that 40 people, because it's 100 in total, 40 people studied French. If you worked out how many year 10 students studied French, you would have done 40 take away 15, that's 25. If there's 29 people doing Spanish, nine of them must have been in year 10. And then finally, if you've done 54 take away nine and take away 25, you would have got 20. So the answer is 20. So question number 14 says, on a particular day, 98 people visited Leisure Center. So that 98 could be the total, let's read on. Some are gonna go swimming, some are going to play tennis, some are going to play badminton, and the rest are going swimming. So it looks like there's four sports, gym, playing tennis, 
badminton and swimming. And then we're told that 51 of the people are adults. We're told that 21 of the 40 people going to the gym are adults, that 19 adults and seven children are going swimming, and that seven of the 20 people playing badminton are adults, and twice as many children play tennis than adults. How many children play tennis? Okay, so let's draw a two-way table for that. So we've got our adults and children in total, and we've got the gym, tennis, badminton, swimming in total. So let's draw that two-way table. Okay, so if we go back up, we're told that 98 people visited the leisure center, so we can put that into our two-way table to begin with. So let's put our 98 into our two-way table there, 98. And then let's put the information that we've been told. So we're told that 51 people are adults, so there's 51 adults. We'll work out the children in a minute. We're told that 21 of the 40 people go into the gym, so there's 40 people going to the gym, and 21 of them are adults. That's 19 adults and seven children are going swimming. So 19 adults and seven children are going swimming. We can work out the total in a minute. We're told that seven of the 20 people playing badminton. So there's 20 people playing badminton and seven of them are adults. And we're told that twice as many children as adults play tennis. And there's nothing else you can write there yet. Perhaps whenever I know the total for tennis, then we can work that out. Or actually I'm looking at this and thinking we can work out how many adults played tennis and then we can work out how many children play tennis. And we've been asked how many children play tennis so we want to find this number here now there's lots of different ways you can do this the quickest way probably would be to work out how many adults play tennis and then you can work out how many children play tennis i'm just going to fill in the two-way table here just for a bit of fun so we've got here we know that there's 40 people went to the gym 21 are adults 40 take away 21 is 19 that 20 people play badminton seven are adults that means that 13 children played badminton in terms of the swimming we've got 19 adults and seven children that's 26 in terms of the total number of children, if we do 98 take away 51, that's equal to 47. So there's 47 children. So we've got those numbers. Now, in terms of our tennis, we can find this in different ways. We could find the total. So we could do 40 plus 20 plus 26 and take that away from 98. We could work out the number of children that play tennis by doing 19 plus 13 plus seven and take that away from 47. Or we could have done what I probably would have done to begin with, and that was to work out this number by doing 21 plus 7, that's equal to 28, plus 19, 28 plus 19. If we added 20, it'll be 48, so it's going to be 47. And then we could just take that away from 51. So 51 take away 47 is equal to 4. So there's four adults that play tennis. And the question said twice as many children play tennis than adults. That means there's going to be eight children that play tennis. And that means there was 12 there altogether. And that's it. And the question says how many children play tennis? And the answer is eight. And that's it. Okay, let's have a look at our next question, question number 15. So question number 15 says, there's 40 boys and girls at a youth club. So we've got this youth club with 40 boys and girls there. There's 23 girls. So that means there's going to be 17 boys taking that away. We're told that nine girls play rounders. Four boys do not play rounders. And the question says, how many boys play rounders at the youth club? Let's do our two-way table because there's a lot of information there. Okay, so we've drawn our two-way table and we've been asked how many boys play rounders. So how many boys play rounders at the youth club? So we want to find this number. So let's fill in the numbers we know. We know that there's 40 boys and girls and there's 23 girls. So there's 23 girls. So that means there's 17 boys. And then we're told that nine girls play rounders. So nine girls play rounders. So nine girls play rounders. That's there. Nine girls play rounders. Four boys do not play rounders. And we've been asked how many boys play rounders at the youth club. So we need to find this number. Now, actually, because I've already worked out there were 17 boys, we could just do, well, 17 take away 4 is equal to 13. So the answer would be 13. There's 13 boys play rounders at the youth club. Now, you could have done this in different ways. You could have perhaps found out there was 14 girls that don't play rounders. You could have perhaps worked out there was 18 people that didn't play rounders altogether. You could have maybe worked out there was 22 people that played rounders. And if there being been 9 girls, that meant there was 13 boys and so on. But how many boys played rounders? rounders at the youth club the answer is 13. Okay, let's have a look at our last question, question number 16. And there's quite a lot of information here. Um, I'm thinking a two-way table might be useful to help us uh, sort of start to look at that information. Um, so let's read it. A teacher surveys 66 students on how they travel to school. 20 of the students are in year seven. The student surveys 40% more students in year nine than in year seven. The rest of the students surveyed are in year 11. So it looks like there's been a survey of year seven, nine and 11 students. 80% of the students in year 7 walked to school, 6 more students in year 9 walked to school than didn't walk to school, and out of the students surveyed, more year 11 students walked to school than year 9 students. 
We've been told one of the students has then picked at random. Write down the probability that the student did not walk to school. So there's a lot of information there. Let's create a two-way table. So we've got year seven, nine, and 11 walk to school and did not walk to school and the totals so let's write that down okay so i've created a two-way table with year seven nine eleven total walk not walk in total and then if we go back up we're told that the teacher surveyed 66 students so let's put that in the 66 students 66 and then if we're going to be going back up and down a bit here 20 of them are in year seven so 20 of the students surveyed are in year seven and then let's go back up again we're told that this teacher surveyed 40% more in year nine than in year seven, so we'll come back to that in a minute. The rest of the students surveyed are in year 11. 80% of the students in year seven walk to school, so we can actually work that out, the 80% of the 20 students to see how many year sevens walked. Six more students in year nine walked to school than did not walk, and out of the year students that surveyed, more year 11s walked to school than in year nine. I'm actually going to work out the 80% of the year seven students here just to work out how many year seven students walk to school. So we want to find 80%. So let's do 10%. 10% of 20 equals. So 10% of 20 divided by 10 would be 2. So that means the 80% of 20, we're going to multiply by 8. So that's going to be 2 times 8 is 16. So that means that 16 year seven students walk. So let's write that down. 16 year seven students walk to school and the rest didn't walk so it's going to be four because we we know that that has to be 20 altogether now let's look at the year nine students and we're told the teacher surveyed 40 percent more students in year nine than in year seven now they surveyed 20 students in year seven so we need to increase that by 40 percent because we want to find out what number is 40 percent more than this now 10 percent of 20 is equal to two so it means that 40 percent 40 percent of 20 we would just times two by four that's going to be eight so there's 20 students in year seven that were surveyed there's 40 percent more that means eight more so that means 28 year nine students were surveyed so let's write that down 28 and actually we were told if we go back up the rest of the students were in year 11 so the rest of the students are in year 11 so we can work out how many year 11 students were surveyed so if we do 20 plus 28 that's equal to 48 and then if we do 66 the total take away 48 that's equal to 18 so that means it was 18 year 11 students surveyed now if we go back up we were told six more students in year nine walked to school than did not walk to school so six more students in year nine walked to school than didn't walk to school so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to half this, that's 14, and I'm going to increase that by 3 and decrease it by 3. Because if I increase it by 3, that's going to give me 17, and if I decrease it by 3, that's going to be 11. And that, those two numbers will be 6 apart, we've got 6 more people walk to school and didn't walk to school. So what I've done there is we'll, I've halved the 28, which is 14, and I've increased it by 3 and decreased by 3. And then that's told me, because I know the two numbers must add together to be 28, which they do, and one needs to be 6 bigger than the other one. So that's one way you could approach that to find out how many year nine students walked to school and didn't walk to school. Another approach would be to use an equation and to let the number of year nine students that didn't walk be x. The number that walked was six more, so it's going to be plus x plus six, and that's equal to 28. So that's an equation. x plus x is 2x, and then we've still got a plus six, and that's equal to 28. Let's take away 6 from both sides, so you're going to get 2x is equal to 22, and dividing both sides by 2 gives us x is equal to 11. So that means this number will be 11, and this number of 6 more should be 17. So that's two different approaches you could use there. And if we go back up, okay, so we've dealt with that sentence, now let's look at our next one. So we're told that out of the students surveyed, more year 11 students walk to school than year 9. So this number needs to be bigger than this number. But wait, there's only 18 year 11 students surveyed. That means they must have all walked. That's the only way they can be a larger number in this box than in this box if they all walked, because we couldn't have 19 because there was only 18 surveyed. So that means that out of the year 11s, none of those. And then, and now let's work out our totals, four plus 11, so that's 15. And then in terms of this row, well, 66 take away 15 is equal to 51. Alternatively, we could do 16 plus 17, which is equal to 33, plus 18 is equal to 51, and that's it. Now the question says, write down the probability a student's picked at random, so one of the 66 students has picked at random, and work out the probability that they did not walk to school. So 15 of them did not walk to school out of the 66. So the probability would be 15 66. Now you could cancel this down. We weren't asked to, but we could cancel it down. They're both divisible by three. 15 divided by three is five, and 66 divided by three is 22. So the answer would be five 20 seconds or five 22s. 
and that's it and that's it so these have been the video solutions to the two-way tables practice questions i really hope you find this video useful if you need any extra help on this topic if you go to corpmavs.com forward slash content so scroll down to video number 319 there's a video tutorial there on two-way tables um but i hope you found this video useful and if you have found it useful please like it and please subscribe to the youtube channel thank you cheers bye